Hey guys, Sean Lentz here from Appalachian DIY, and today what we're going to be doing is creating headers. So what we're going to be doing today is creating headers. We're going to be doing an insulated header. I'm going to show you how we are going to put that together and the nailing pattern for it. It's pretty simple, but there are some little um, nuances to it um, to make a really good header. We'll go over those right now. All right, so what we got here is I have my 2 by 12 um, set up. We have it set to um, the length that we need it. Um, I'm at 113 inches and 7 eighths, so all three of my um, two by 12s are cut to that. I also have some half inch XPS foam. And what we're going to do with that is we're gonna sandwich that right in between each and every board. What that's gonna do is it's gonna add some R value to our header. Um, I'm choosing two inch because we're still gonna be able to get through both boards um, with a nail. Now I am shooting three inch with these. Um, I also have some box nails that are three and a half. We're gonna sink some of those in here to help it hold a little better. I'm using .131 ring shanks because I want it to hold together well. If it um, bows out a little bit, those ring shanks, when you hit it with a hammer, it just sucks everything together and holds it really well. Um, I think if you use a smooth shank and you hit it, it tends to bounce a little bit, so I don't really care for that. So we're going to use ring shanks to um, pull it together and the box nails to um, go through all the thick layers that we have. You could do a thicker header. Uh, you could do what they call like a box header where you have two boards out here with a bunch of insulation in the middle. You're going to have a bottom plate on top and a top plate on top. Um, and you just nail through the top and the bottom then. So that's your two board header like that. It's a greater R value, but I need the strength. So we're gonna use three two by 12s. So we're gonna get this in here like this, flush it up on this side. And we're gonna measure, since we're a little, these are four by eight sheets. I need just a little bit, 17, seven eighths. We're gonna cut that out of here. Okay, there we go. So now we got our insulation in place. One more thing before we move on guys is we always want the crown of our board to be up. You don't want your header to already sag down. So we're always gonna crown these boards Well, that's about dead flat, that's really good. All right, I'll say this is the top. So this is my crown up here. So I want this like this. I also put my cups to the outside. Um, that's just the way I like to do it. I don't like it to be cupped out like this it just pulls so much harder. So we have our cup to the outside. This is our top. So we'll take our foam, line it up. We'll take our other board. So now you have some options um, with how you're gonna crown your boards. So we, since we have three boards, um, I'll probably put one crown uh, down sagging. Um, that just will help straighten everything out. And then the last third board, I'll put the crown up. So if you put crowns opposite of each other, they'll tend to straighten themselves out. You'll just have to put a little leverage with a nail or something to get them in place. Um, but that's a good way to straighten out a header that has a little bit more crown than we got. Um, these are pretty dead flat, so I'm not gonna be too worried about it. That's another good one. Ooh, I'll say that's almost too hard to tell. But I'll say this is a crown. So I'll put this one crowned down. Honestly, it doesn't matter because it's not crowned so hard. The cup, that's almost cut in the middle. So that's a really good one. Okay, now we'll just flush everything up. 
What we'll do now is we will sink nails going across this. Um, rule of thumb is you want to stay two inches off your edges. So we'll take our speed square, find two inches. There we go. So we got a nice um, edge to work off of. I think they don't want you to go any closer two inches. That way you start splitting the board. So we're good here, good on our edges, good on our side. Now I'm picking one side um, to do all my measurements off of, and that's this one over here. I don't want to uh, try and do it on, or level up on both sides. Um, just pick one side, and that's this one right here. So we'll do a couple across here. I'll do four, I'll do five. There we go, so five across there. Now, we're gonna do a nail every 12 inches. Um, I think you can get away with 16. Listen guys, it's, they are pennies on a dollar for nails. So, um, the more you use, and you ain't gonna hurt it, even if you did six on center. You're, you're gonna be just fine. Um, you want this thing to hold together, so don't skimp on it. Okay, so we're gonna go down through here. As we go down through, I'm gonna be checking with my speed square to make sure that we're still flush. 12 inches. 24. Okay, so we just have the slightest bow right here. So we're gonna pull this out a little bit. Nail it. Good. Don't nail. Keep working our way down. Okay, so the next debate is whether you should nail from both sides. You absolutely can. I'm not going to. Um, we're just gonna follow. Now I'm gonna offset these nails here. Um, so I have my one foot marks here. I'm just gonna put one offset from each one on the um, lower side. What I'm gonna do now is I bought those three and a half inch box uh, nails. We're gonna sink some of those in here. Um, you can set them inside. I'm just doing this because we have that layer of insulation on the inside and shooting through inch and a half plus a half inch of XPS foam with a three inch nail that leaves us an inch going through the other side. So we're losing that half inch. Um, it's not super huge that we do this. However, it's gonna help a little bit. The box of nails was a little over five bucks. So a little bit of insurance for me goes a long way since we are using um, this foam inside here. Um, I do wanna hold this a little bit better. So guys, this is definitely way above and beyond what is actually needed for this. Um, at a minimum, you want the two inch on the edge and 16 inch on center. I would definitely go 12 um, for top and bottom and then zip up the ends here with a bunch of nails. I think four is like the minimum. Um, but adding these extra nails is definitely not gonna hurt. I've also heard guys putting nails down at a diagonal. That's absolutely feasible. There's nothing wrong with that either. Does it make a big difference? No. Is it code? I don't think it is. It just helps beef up the board a little bit. Like I said, sinking more nails is definitely not gonna hurt it. All right, that looks pretty good. 
Um, what I'm going to do is just fill in in between. This puts my nails six inches on center, way overkill. Um, I'm okay with it though, ain't going to hurt nothing. Okay, that looks good. The next thing we're going to do is put our third board on here, our foam in between, um, get this thing tightened up. I am brushing off the uh, plastic nailing clips. I don't want anything to have this separate. Um, that's the biggest thing is it delaminating or pulling apart from each other. So do anything we can to get it not to do that. So we had our splice on that end. So we'll put the full piece here. Okay, that looks good. Before I go anywhere, I am going to flip this on edge and make sure that we are tight. I don't see any gaps. All right, so I have a small one right here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my clamp. Now this is probably, oh my, a 16th of an inch gap right here. Nothing crazy. Give this two ring shanks. little love. Suck that right in. Perfect. I'll do the end down here as well. Now this is where you can nail from the other side too. Um, just to pull everything together if you guys are that worried about it. I'm not. Um, but like for stuff like this, when we do have a little bit pulling apart from each other, that's absolutely okay to do that. That's just gonna help us pull this header together all that much more. So we'll give her another couple ring shanks here. A little bit of love. There we go. All right, now we'll check the other side. And this too, guys, can be from the boards just being cupped a little bit. Um, so that could be that as well. But we're just gonna go ahead and go down through here and just button this up a little better. All right, so we have our long piece here. We had our joint down here. So we'll take our long piece and stick it to this side. And then our section over here, our small section will be on this side. That way the joints are offset for that. So we'll just take our speed square, go down here on the edge. That looks real good. And then for our top, like I said, everything is being measured off of one side. I'm not trying to get both sides squared up, just one side. That way I know one side is at least perfectly square. Oh, perfect. Okay, we're ready to nail this guy in place. Same exact thing, we're gonna do our 12 on center. We could actually probably be doing the um, 18s on center because we're coming back through with another nail set in between with those box nails. That would give us eight inches on center. Again, still a little overkill, but 100% okay with it. We'll run our two inch edge.
Nice, right on. Uh, it really helps having <laughs> straight headers that, I mean, obviously that goes beyond saying, but if you guys don't have straight ones, put a screw, a nail, whatever, into one of these and pull with your hammer for leverage to get these straightened out. Um, you'd be amazed how straight and good these can get once you guys do that. So come back down through, do it in the center. Okay, we'll do the same thing. Make sure everything's tight. Flip this up. That even looks better than the other one. I don't see any gaps in that side. Flip it. Oh, that one was really good. All right, so we're good. So there we go, guys. Got our header made up. You can do this in place. I like to lift them into place. We have a tractor to, that has a little boom on it, so <coughs> if you don't have that, build it up in place exactly the way I showed you here on the ground. That's it, guys. Make sure you get your spacing. We'll do our every other one just for a little extra insurance with our box nails, but this header is done. Um, this is a garage header, so it's two by 12. We'll be doing a man door over here. Um, we'll show you that maybe here in a little bit. Um, that's pretty much it, guys, for this garage header. All right, so we got our header in place. We need to nail it fast now. We have our king stud right here, which goes all the way from the bottom sill to the top plate. We're gonna nail through the back here. Um, we'll probably give it at least five nails per each board. Um, if you didn't have a space here, uh, you can toe nail this in. Since we have the king stud and we have room, we're gonna nail it through the back. Can you see the volumes changing on there? It's on? All right. Are we good? You guys ready? All right guys, that wraps up this video for this header. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and head over to Appalachian DIY for more videos. Thanks again guys, and I hope to see you next time.